it is a perhaps curious and quaint fact that ordinarily speakers conferences are convened at the instigation of the government of the day. Indeed, I recall a particular occasion some years ago when I had some interest in the possibility of a speakers conference on aspects of parliamentary power. If I say to the right honourable gentleman that the reaction at the time to my suggestion of the then Leader of the House was not wildly enthusiastic, I think I would be somewhat understating the position. But that was then, and maybe the new Leader of the House, or relatively new Leader of the House, who has been a notable reformer in other respects, will be seized by the salience of what the Right Honourable Gentleman has commended to the House, and will feel that she could have a key role in initiating such an important constitutional development. And if she did, you know, I would be perfectly willing to play ball with it. I have no idea. It's not something she and I have discussed. But you never know. You never know. Point of order, the, the Leader of the House. Yeah, Mr Speaker, I just want to uh, be very clear. I am indeed a reforming Leader of the House of Commons. And for me, treating colleagues with courtesy and respect is at the forefront of that reform. And any Speaker's Council would have to have that at its heart. And I simply would not be confident that that would be the case. Well, so be it. I treat the House with respect. I've treated its members with respect. I chaired a previous Speaker's Conference and there was no criticism of the way in which I did so. One reason why the Leader of the House might not be well versed in that particular Speaker's Conference and in a position to make a judgment about my chairmanship of it is very simply that it took place before the Right Honourable Lady entered the House of Commons. Point of order. Uh, point of order, Dr Matthew Offord. This House runs on conventions, as you have already made clear in your statement today. And one of those conventions is that the Treasury bench always tells the opposition bench of statements they are going to make. So to clarify this, Mr Speaker, can you confirm to the House that you not only informed the Leader of the House of your intention to make this statement, but also told her the contents of your statement. He can't confirm anything of the sort. And what I would say to the Honourable Gentleman is that his understanding about what might happen between the usual channels is one thing. That absolutely does not apply to Speaker's statements. And if the Honourable Gentleman... Oh, well, the Honourable Gentleman shrugs and says, why not? That has never been the case. The Speaker of the House makes statements to the House at a time when the Speaker of the House thinks that they will be of interest and benefit to the House. I am under absolutely no obligation whatsoever to pre-announce that statement, either to the Leader of the House or to the Shadow of Leader of the House, and I did not do so. And if the Honourable Gentleman, a keen student of parliamentary procedure, is offended by that fact, well, I'm sorry, and he is, of course, welcome to be offended. But there is absolutely no breach of parliamentary protocol or etiquette whatsoever. That is the reality, and I have explained the position in terms clear and unmistakable.